Would you believe it? Somebody just called my phone, sneezed, and then hung up. I'm really, really getting tired of these cold calls. Hey kids, Adam here. This is part two of the Nature of Bass Mix Breakdown, the purple section. If you haven't heard the song yet, there's a link in the description. I'll also put it up in a YouTube card up here somewhere. And uh, let's, you know, skip the whole babbling that I did in the first video, go right into Reaper. I know you guys are like, sure, sure, okay. All right, we're in Reaper here. I'm gonna play just the purple section, all of the effects and everything on, and here we go. much shorter section here this is kind of the uh the prelude to the solo section that uh is coming up next i really only had the bass line and a drum part for this section when i first started out so i'm going to start the opposite of the last i'm going to start right with the bass line and let me turn off all the plugins real quick i'll be back in a snap the fingers all right, I'm going to start with the bass on this one because there are a lot of other little parts that I added in, and some of them were actually added in after the bass was recorded. I did layer a number of these things in, but for the most part, it was just kind of the bass and some drum buildups. So we'll start with the bass here. This is no effects, just the regular bass. So the first thing I did was the Kramer uh, HLS mono again, because I like that. Uh, again, 700 hertz, 2dB, didn't really touch anything else. I didn't want to, I, I did do the analog plugin. In fact, if you guys want to uh, take a look at that video, uh, put a card up. Oh, I'm so confused which side it shows up on. I can't see it in the room here, obviously, but I'll put a card up somewhere for that video. So with the with with just this on and it really brings out that it I mean it, I really like the way it brings out that uh the the mids and a little bit of the string kind of grinding noise in there and everything. Uh I decided to do just regular EQ on this. I was having some issues getting everything I needed with the the SSL channel. So I did just a real quick um 45, 44 hertz, low pass filter. I did a dip at that 60 hertz range because that's where I'm boosting a lot of my drums. I had a big boost at 121 hertz, another boost at 1.5K, another boost just shy of 4K. So let's do before and after EQ here. Before. After. Not huge jumps and changes, but as you add everything else in, this kind of carves out spaces for it. Here's where I do my big volume jump in my double stack compressors. And this is just the standard, uh, what I do for a lot of my basses, four to one ratio, this bass preset, and I bring the input uh, to maybe three dB a gain reduction. So I'll do the first one. <laughs> And then the second one. And then I put JS saturation on again at 100% just because I love the way this sounds. And then Kramer tape. That's it for bass. Let's move on to the next instrument, which a lot of these are going to be effects. And then there's the, the first four are going to be like sound effect loops. 
And then the next set is going to be all drums. So here we go with first kind of sound sample here. Kind of a cool, airy little thing. And I wanted to basically hit this the same way I did with in the first section. Hit it with SSL channel. I have a high pass filter way up here, 167, low pass at like 10K. Uh, I'm hitting it with 4.5 dB at 8K, almost 6 dB, uh, another 4.5 actually at uh, 2K. I take out some of that little cheap boxy sound because you can kind of hear it in the in the lower part of that. And then uh, some compression. So with this off and on. It just brings those sparkles out, you know, the little sheen sparkles without being too harsh. All right, I'm gonna skip this EQ because this will come back in when I get the saturation and things on it. So I hit it with JS saturation, this time it's 70. And then I hit it with Kramer tape. Now there's this like high pitched little thing that's like bearing into the deep recesses of my brain. What I found out is that at about 12K, there's this just high piercing sound. So I took like negative 16 dB out of it. Uh, so I'll play before and after. It was just like every seventh or eighth note in that arpeggiating thing was like this really piercing thing. So I pulled that out and then I added that to the room reverb as well. And I pan it 100% left. I'll go to the 100% right one and play this for you next. And again, this is going to get old, but I'm hitting with SSL channel, high boosts, some low mid cuts, and then some compression, saturation, and then Kramer tape again. And I'll do all the effects kind of before and after. And then the room reverb. And it just brightens it up. It just brings it out. It bring, these synth sounds a lot of the times, especially if they're older and were maybe probably recorded in 16-bit um, back in the day, are just they're not as bright sounding as uh, they're muddy. They're kind of just don't really sound that great. Let me play for you the right channel and the left channel now at the same time in this section. Because their tempo sync, they sound good, they sound good offset. So I like where they were. Uh, next one is this arpeggio here. And I have this in the first half. And this is gonna get, you're gonna, I mean, this is, this. it's basic mixing here. I'm using EQ compression on a channel strip. Uh, I have a pretty high high pass filter over 200 Hertz. Uh, I have a 11, almost 12K low pass. I have an 8K or so bump at 3dB bump. I have a 3dB bump at 1.5K. And then I have this uh, kind of taking out the low boxy stuff at um, 56 or 560 hertz. And then a standard 4 to 1 compression with, for on everything. And then I hit with saturation and Kramer tape as well. Nothing fancy here. So before and after on this one. Doesn't really do much for the first half, but that second half when it does like the the phased uh, EQ, it really brings it out. And then I hit this with a lot of the, the, the entire reverb. So you can really hear that, you know, kind of echoing. Uh, next one is kind of a, I don't even know what to call this. Old M gapped is the name of the file back from the, the actual loop. Uh, just play it for you here. A real cool back and forth kind of thing and uh, this one I just hit with high pass filter I didn't really hit it with any EQ except for this like low 
uh, 3db out at um, 360 hertz, and then I compressed it, and then I added JS saturation on it. So we'll do a before and after, and I'll add the reverb. I add the reverb right away too. And after. So all four of these instruments in, and I'll do it when the set, when the fourth one comes in here without the bass. Here's what these four sound like. In the beginning without the third one. All right, so onto the drums. What I did here, the first thing I did was each individual drum, and then I'll show you what I did on the bus. It's called Deep and Bangin'. It sounds deep and bangin', I guess. So what I did for this one, I hit it with a little bit of a high, a little bit of high pass filter, just a 20, just to get rid of all that low, like, like rumble, like some of the tracks I wanted on, but this one I found as I added more rumble, I lost clarity, which is typically what happens. Uh, added a big 6 dB boost at 8K, and then took some out and then added 60K or 60 Hertz here. I added 6 dB and then some compression on it. So before and after, this is gonna be much louder because I added a four and a half dB um, gain boost. So there's that one. Next one is this, um, and what I did is each of these drums, I'll play just the drum section as they come, at, when I get all the plugins in, as they come in, each one kind of builds on itself. So I have this next one here. And again, I, I a lot of the same kind of boosts and moves I've been doing, uh, 8K, and another boost, you know, 4.5K, I took out a little bit at this 300 hertz area, and then I boosted like, uh, 60 hertz and then add a compression and I'll put gain to match and then I needed one more I had another situation where up here it was causing this weird uh, clicking sound so I got rid of that all right so before and after on this and after just really brought out the the boom in the bass and then that hi-hat really comes out well. So next track is going to be another drum loop. And again, I hit this with the same types of things. Um, boost at 8K, boost at, uh, this one I found a little bit over 1K, took out a little bit 300 and added another one at 60 Hertz. So before and after. And that one really brought things out. Next one, you can see as the waveforms come in that I'm building these on top of each other. So this one before. And again, uh, a lot of the same SSL channel stuff. Uh, a little bit lower boost at 60 hertz because that bass is pretty, in the sample itself, it's pretty heavy. And then, you know, standard compressor and gain reduction to match. So before. after and then finally i have this acid jazz drums loop again and i did the same thing that I did in the green section if you haven't seen that you should go watch that i basically took I, I took one part of it and ran standard settings on that and then i split the two off into a low using a high pass filter using a low and high frequency so those are three of these together um, I'll do the three of these together before and after effects. And I only did one measure of it because I wanted to kind of end that phrase. So here's before again. And here's after with all the effects. So I took out kind of the mids, I emphasized the highs, and I brought that bass in. And then on the drum bus itself, I solo just the drums here, I did Kramer tape, and then I added a little EQ dip at 120, which is where I'm boosting the bass. And then I added the reverb, the room reverb on. I didn't need it on each individual channel. So here's all the drums. 
Uh, I'll play it all the way through and you can hear how everything builds. So there's the purple section. I really like the way this section came together. I was able to build all the drums and the bass line and kind of build them in all in one piece. I uh, really enjoyed putting this section specifically together and how it came together. If you like this video and this series, please click like, comment, subscribe, hit the little bell thing I'm here. I'm running out of words of what to call that thing. Uh, what's the official word for it? Bell thinger? Thingy? Doohickey? Thingamajigger? Whatchamacallit? I don't know. Uh, and if you really want to help, there's a link down below to buy me a Coke. Uh, look forward to part three, which is going to be the orange slash red section. Come on up next. <laughs>